Hey, Lowry. Hello. Element. Is that how you yeah, say Yeah, correct. <laughs> how you doing? Welcome to Wee Wee Blogs. Now, there's a little bird that told me a story about you working with Desmond's child when you were in Greece, right? Yes. And you called him and say, hey, Desmond, I really have a new mission. I want to write the best Eurovision song ever. What did he say to you? Let's do this. Devin and Aramey, WeWeBlogs.com. Oh my God, Larry, you know, I feel, I can feel your energy like through the whole Zoom chat. This is so exciting. Oh my God. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm doing good. It's been busy a couple of weeks since we released the song. All right. Actually, it's not be even be a couple of weeks. It's like one week, but it feels like three weeks being so busy. And uh, it's fantastic. A lot of good response with the song. I'm, I'm happy. Well, congratulations on 28 years of rocking out. I have followed most of those years. This is so exciting. I mean, you are the band that can rock it out on a school stage and then go to a packed out stadium and just give the same amount of energy <laughs> how nice. does it feel actually um you know playing to different audiences at different scales i think you just said it you know it's the joy of playing and joy of being together as a group on stage i've said like million times that i'm so happy that i'm not a solo artist you know it's fun to be with the guys and girls now you know we have such well, a good time. it's funny you say girl because I was thinking, is Amelia the Jezebel in that video? I mean, there's the moment when you know the lyrics are starting to say, you know, the girl that looks like a boy, the one who's working, you know, like rocking it out, leaving a scar on your heart. Is it Amelia? Well, I think it's all of us. You know, I always people told me that I look like a girl, <laughs> so it's like all mixed up. Who's what? Who's who? You know, we're all Jezebels. Well, I suppose there's a Jezebel inside every one of us. I mean, you know, we only have to look at our histories and figure out, you know, I'm sure we've come across that character at some point. In a way, though, the bio of Jezebel actually celebrates women's independence and empowerment in a way. So it's interesting how you flip that from something which is traditionally negative to something quite positive. Yeah, at least we tried. You know, I think the song has a positive vibe and all, but uh, Jezebel, the inspiration came from the Bible. She was the bad bitch of the Bible. <laughs> she was kind of, you know, a murderer, like a really cruel woman but also she was very attractive and like clever and all these kind of things like she's just fascinating but um that's that was for the inspiration but we wanted to take it to the modern day and write a song that is more like a tribute to all to all the people who who live their life like without thinking at what other th other people might think or make decisions that have risk, you know, they're brave, like free souls, like myself too. You know, I've always done things my own way. You know, it's still, at this age, I'm quite special. <laughs> I have to say, <laughs> you know, like I could have done things differently in my life, but I'm happy that I, I had the, the courage uh, to do things. And they have taken me kind of far. I just like being true to myself and, you know, yeah. I'm just going to touch back on what you said earlier that, you know, your inspiration was the Bible because there's another line in the song, hands tied like Jesus on a cross, you know, and that also was another biblical moment where um, I felt you touched on the Bible. <laughs> yeah, of course we had to, you know, dig a little deeper, but that's like, a, it's, it's about like a rough, like a, party night that you know you wake up your hands tied in the, in the bed and like what the hell like 
Jezebel. Oh, Lowry, yeah. you took it in another direction. I wasn't even thinking. I was thinking of the crucifixion, but you're still about this predator in heels. Oh, wow. That's spicy. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Another thing I like is your music. I mean, over the years, you've got nine very successful albums. All your albums have peaked in the top 20. And they've always been on the NME list. And, you know, I mean, Black Roses, excellent album. Into, you know, a lot of them are masterpieces in their own right. But as a huge fan of your work, I feel like there's an element of melancholy, um, positive sadness. Um, uplifting and great melodies. When you guys were announced, the Rasmus, UMK, I'm like, seriously, like, why are you even competing? Because I know UMK has gone on for several years, but there've been different formats of UMK. So when Sarah Alta, for instance, was in UMK and Darude, it was a case of, we decided we are sending you. Now, can the Finnish people choose the songs? So when the Rasmus were announced, I was like, oh, this is interesting. They're actually fully competing. <laughs> like, this is, um, how did the whole process come about? Uh, but also, were you aware that there are different routes that you could have taken um, in terms of being selected for Eurovision? Yeah, but I mean, this is the, most fair way. I mean, we have seven artists competing from Finland and uh, they're all great. They're all different, but in their own ways, they're great. So it's a, it's a tough competition for us to first win Finland, you know, but it's fun. I love this feeling because it's been so boring with COVID and not being able to do anything, you know, just maybe that was the main reason I thought like, we got to do something. I get, we came up this song, Jezebel, and felt like, oh, this is kind of a winner song. You know, it has that kind of a vibe. And uh, I thought about your vision and, and, and uh, I, I called the guys like, you know what? I think we, we're going to go there. Are you with me? And uh, they said, yeah, let's do this. And, and um, ever since it's been like uh, great because we are fighting for something. It's like, back in the days, you know, when we wanted to get our song on the radio or, you know, whatever. But it just feels like, in a way, it's a new beginning for the band. And also we have a new guitarist. It's a fantastic chance for us to be able to do something together, try to achieve something as a group. And it's gonna really nicely unite us, you know? Did you, did you ever discuss the possibility of, um, of just being internally picked, like, you know, was that was that option available on the table where you could have been just selected and then we choose the song options? Well, I think it's kind of a, you know, this feeling has grown on me like that we should be part of this. We have been asked many times, honestly, even from, from the organization, you know, but I, I don't think it was the right time and we didn't have the right song. So, right. yeah. And maybe I, I saw the whole thing in a different light before. I thought it more, more like a competition, though it is a competition, but now I've started to think about the concept, how great it is. Like every country picks their, you know, the best artist, best song, and then they sent them out there. And it, it, it's a, such a positive thing, like how the Eurovision originally was created to unite the countries. You know, how cool is that if you think about it? So I think like I wasn't just um, good enough to understand it before. And now I feel like, you know, really, I'm really excited about this. And we are excited to have you as well. You know, it's interesting, lots of rock bands um, love Eurovision, you know, I mean, recently we've had Sound Engine, Blind Channel, Man of Skin, of course, but it always, it always amazes me because 
as rock stars, and I know, and I've seen you guys gig over the years, you've been on top of the pops, you've done, I, you, I always think your instruments are not live. Everything is kind of like simulated, only your vocals really. Um, <laughs> for, for rock stars like you, what's the attraction? Because you can't actually gig live with your instruments. So what is the attraction for the Eurovision world? Well, for me, it's full on live, you know. I'm a bit nervous, you know, it's it's a good feeling. I've been rehearsing like crazy this one song. Every time I'm driving my car, every time I'm walking on the streets, people are like, is that the guy? Is he singing his own song? But, but Laura, you don't have to care about your bass chords. You don't have to care about the drum. Like, it doesn't have to be live. Yeah. You don't well, even have another... to even need... But I think I consider it more like a, it's something between a, like a music video and a live show. Because it's nice that now we're creating the show and it's going to be fantastic. We have such a good idea for it. And uh, like, uh, it's, it is like so well thought, you know, everything is, there's a reason for everything. It's, it's really interesting. So it's, it's kind of like a live music video in a way, you know, it's like mm. a million camera angles and edits and clips. And, you know, it's really fun to be part of something like this. It's something we haven't done before as a band, too. Absolutely. Um, we've got to talk about, actually, let's talk a bit about Desmond Child because he's a bit of a big deal. I mean, he, you collab, you've collaborated with him before. He worked on Black Roses. But aside from that, Poison, Kiss, Alice Cooper, Bon Jovi, like he, any rock act, that has solidly achieved, you know that Desmond's child's been in the mix. And to have this direct line where you call him in his, in his Greek taverna and he's saying, come over. It's bananas. Can you talk us through that moment? Yeah, I, I know it's crazy for me because I, I grew up with his music. Every song I liked some, somehow, he was part of. And I didn't know it back then, but I was just finding this good music and Later on, I, I realized that this guy was, was writing these songs and producing. And so I was a big fan already before he, he contacted me, but just got an email one day, like writing, hi, this is Desmond. I love your band. I know you have your producers and you have your everything, blah, blah, blah. But I just want to work with you. I was like, oh, this is a spam or something. This is not real. So. It was, and so I, I, we met him. He came to see us in Dominican Republic. Interesting place, we had a good I love, day. I love how global this is. I mean, are you one of those people that show up on thin air and they're like, okay, 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 seat 1A, we are moving. <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> oh yeah. No, we, we had a couple of days, we played a show in this beautiful amphitheater place. And then, then he joined us, the hotel, we stayed there a couple of nights, drinking some rum and smoking Cuban cigars and planning the future, how we take over the world. It was fun. He's, he's a great character. He's really, really talented, but he's so very fun. You know, he's crazy. But apart from being crazy and apart from you also being a little crazy, Lowry, one thing you do have is the magic of working together because Jezebel was one of the easiest songs that you've ever written. I mean, it was written in like just just under two hours. I, like, how did both of you just vibe so well on this track, which, by the way, is amazing. <laughs> I, I don't, if I only knew, you know, how to do that every time, I guess I would. But, you know, it's, um, I just, Recently, I've got older. I wanted to do things based on a feeling, you know. I just have these visions. Like, I came up with the demo of the song. I was like, I gotta call Desmond now, and let's finish this song together. And he's like, Come to Greece tomorrow, and we'll write write the song. And I flew there from Hawaii, where I live, Hawaii to Greece, Greek island, Folagandros. Took me like thirty five hours to get there like 12 hour time difference and you know, and I went there in the tiny island 
on this boat that it took like five hours, the last ferry thing. And all the people around me were throwing up all around me. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, I can take this. So I got there and we wrote the song in just like two, three hours. You know, it was so like- does he ha- does- does Desmond have a studio out there? No, we're just sitting in his room, um, in a hotel room. Like, um, first, we actually, we talked about life and like, uh, you know, just like, because we haven't seen each other in a couple of years now in, in person. So we just talked about stuff. And that was kind of like when we got into the vibe, like to write the song and, and uh, you know, like, it's important to do that kind of work. But then when we actually starting to write the song, it just like happened by itself. And that's always a good sign if that happens, you know? So you don't have to push it. It's natural. So in the Jezebel writing sessions, did other songs emerge or was it just Jezebel? Um, well, actually we did another song Oh him, yeah. But uh, but um, yeah. Let's talk about and you that finished, later. You finished the you finished the other song too. Yeah. Oh, so clearly you took two songs to the band, right? Jezebel and Song B. So was there a, was there a vote? How did you decide it was going to be Jezebel? Well, I think we just felt like. This is it. It 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 was so obvious in a way. I think it just sounded like something you've heard before, but at the same time, it sounded fresh and fun. You know, it's mm. just um, things and and very time. very Rasmus as well. Oh yeah. You know, it's, it's a, a, you know even though you freshen the lineup and you know you're you're kind of in a way having a rebirth in this field of you know music eurovision world it still sounded like oh, oh. <laughs> yeah i think it's something you can't we can't change or we don't want to change it's the dna of the the identity of the rasmus music but finally working with desmond since I learned all the tricks from him when I was a kid and when I got into music, you know, I learned how to write songs because I was listening to his music. And that's why, why I think we make such a good team with him because we, like, we know exactly what's going on in each other's minds. And, like, and we don't even have to say, like, go to that chord because we already know that, oh, here it comes. And, like, you know, it's just, we're a good team. I think um, it's, it's a little miracle that we are working together, at least for me, because I was listening to his music since I was like five years old, you know, and now I'm working with him. And we, I think we have a very similar taste of music. And uh, we oh. find these tiny little details that we both know that they make the song and they are, you know, that the emotional bits of it, you know, that makes it feel like something. So I, I, think, I like I think, to work with him. I think, I think in terms of the fabric of your, how you work and how you express yourself through music, I think it's always been there. I think what Desmond Child does is that it, he provides the right production elements because sometimes emotions can get drowned out in production but he cradles it and elevates it. So it really is a marriage made in heaven. You know, I've been a fan of your work for a very long time. And I remember years ago, you know, we're talking like the Playboy's years, you know, when you were guys were called Rasmus. And there's a story that was going around in my sort of clubbing days that you were very against the name change. And you didn't like him. You resisted him, blah, blah, blah. But interestingly, that adding the to, to Rasmus, becoming the Rasmus, was also a shift in your success because you went from there, you know, being in the top 20, which was still quite successful for rock, even at that time, 
to shooting into number one with the album Into, which was the first album, of course, where you were called the Rasmus. And yeah. the rest is history because Dead Letters, which followed later on, became even bigger and um, High from the Sun. And, you know, basically you've had that continued success. But why were you so, assuming the rumors are true, was there a resistance on your part to add the to the Rasmus, to Rasmus? Well, I guess I was just pissed that we need to change the name because there was a, a DJ at the time uh, that he... From he Sweden, had, Sweden, right? From Stockholm, the yeah, Swedish it, DJ. Swedish or Danish. I'm not okay. Yeah. sure. But anyway, he was like more popular then. And we, we had confusion. We played some gigs. Fans went to the wrong, <laughs> bought wrong tickets and stuff like that. But I think um, just to, you mentioned that, you know, like changes. And I, I remember before we became the Rasmus, it was so that we third album was kind of flopping and the drummer left the band. Jan, he decided to go to India and we we're like, oh, you know, but kind of similar thing that we just had like couple of months ago here you know with Pauli leaving the band and Pauli yeah and we were kind of in a bad place you know for a moment and it, it was emotionally of course you know it was sad you know he left it's a long friendship and all that and uh but I think uh from from those kind of turning points something good usually happens and I'm feeling the same vibes that what happens in in, in year 2000 when we actually became the Rasmus and we signed our record deal to Sweden because nobody in Finland gave a shit about us. <laughs> so we left and then we came, became internationally very successful. Um, so it's like, it's so important to have these friends and these, my group, you know, my guys with me when it comes to these hard times and you gotta like overcome these things. And I think it's so much And it's also important. That. Yeah, and I think it's also important to have somebody within, I mean, Iro Heinonen has yeah. been in, in the group from, you know, from time immemorial. So, you know, he's stuck it through and through and I'm sure there've been some really tough times and it's quite yeah. good that, We've got Lowry and we've got Iro to um, to kind of keep yeah. keep, keep with, the faith. With Eero, we played the first in the first band when we were on the third grade, like nine years old. You know, that's when we started playing together. And Aki, the drummer, he's he used to be the new guy. This is so funny. Like for twenty two years, he has been the new guy. <laughs> now it's not anymore. Now it's Empu. She's the new guy now. Well, tell me, how, how is it, though, managing a band from three continents? Because you've got, the, you know, you've got an Australian base, you've got, you know, an Aloha base, and you've also got the <laughs> European base. Yeah, it's... Um, it, it can be tricky, but when it comes to touring, when it comes to rehearsing, when it comes to... Uh, writing songs whatever we always come together somewhere sometimes we've gone to spain sometimes we have gone to to the states sometimes in finland you know it's actually quite nice to have this like a band camp you know we book a nice villa somewhere and then just like go there and go to sauna together and like Shh, okay let's do this you know <laughs> <laughs> here it comes again but it's it's fun and uh, usually it's good if there is a w way to spend a little time in our private lives too. Sometimes you know, we all have kids and like go there and do that for a while, and then you really start Lowry. missing the other life. Larry, I've got to ask you because you've got children. Actually, I, do they realize how big a deal? daddy is and how big a deal the Rasmus are and like you guys have nine successful albums I mean like do they have a clue uh well I my, my son four years old I, I just got home actually I'm home now and I had my feathers on I had my 
uh, yellow fur coat on. <laughs> and he was like, let's play this game. Come here. <laughs> like, he's like looking at me like, okay. And you just stepped <laughs> off a 14 hour flight. And it's like, <laughs> let's play a game. Yeah, it's like, he doesn't care. It's just like, hmm, my dad is kind of special, <laughs> you know? And he wears my, my jewelry, my necklaces. And he says like, these are my power necklace. You know, he puts them on and he's singing Jezebel and running around. It's pretty cute. That's good. He's singing Jezebel. Yeah. That's really good. And he knows the words and everything. No, actually oh, wow. he's singing the riff. <laughs> Let's talk about Apocalyptica. Because you've collaborated a number of times. I mean, Venomous Moon is the new single, which is currently out, but Bittersweet also takes you back you know you've previously worked together and of course they were the interval act um when eurovision was in helsinki so mm. have they have they traded any discussions with you have they kind of were they surprised by your um participation mm, i i got a message from aka he's in la right now and he was like like congratulating me for taking part of this and and it's it's so nice to have these musician friends and he's actually a really more than just like a musician friend if i can say like like last summer he he picked me up a few times on his boat and we're just um driving a boat around the helsinki archipelago and and we had really good conversations about life and like relationships and like like really deep stuff. I think it's easier for us to sort of talk about things because we, we've lived a similar life, you know, with him. It's hard to explain, but it just like, it's easier to trust him than someone else. You know, I don't know why, but it's like, I know that he's gonna, they started pretty much the same time as we did. We even played the first time on TV, on a TV show together, both of us, in in the talk show in Finland, like something like ninety six or so. Speaking of Finland, I always feel like every time I've been to Helsinki and I turn on the radio, um, it, it, there's a real thirst for rock music. You know, it's it. You know, it is. It is. I've heard so many of your songs, by the way, on, on Finnish radio. Um, but you guys blew up. I mean, you, you guys. I mean, you know, Finland was just one of your many markets. Um, there was even a rumor that you you flew out to was it China or Taiwan, and you got drowned on snake poison or something, or like you was. It, is that rumor true or something that you went out and you sampled some? poison as a dare or a challenge or something yeah 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 I, i've said that you know i want to try everything the local foods <laughs> i think there's a little bit of a jackass in me so i i've said that some somewhere in an interview so there was a time anywhere i went they always had okay we've heard you want to try stuff so here you go <laughs> here's the this and that you know i was trying different things but this was in taiwan Taiwan, we uh, were on a live TV show and they had pre prepared a drink for me, which had, was uh, like a three part drink. So it was the, the snake, the poison of the snake, and then the saliva that would, with a cup of, little cup of snake blood together, they would kind of like um, be the antidote and kill the poison or whatever, something like that. So. I was like, okay, I'll do this. <laughs> Are the cameras rolling? <laughs> Bye, everybody. <laughs> if you don't hear from me, I had a good life. And had you performed before the challenge or were you going to perform after the challenge? Uh, that was before the show. After? That, that, that was the TV thing happened in the daytime, like before the concert, I think. But it was okay. Uh, <laughs> but we really like the local specialities, you know. Uh, 
or see something that's you know a little bit strange or exotic instead of just like flying in a hotel room because they're all the same so we always um, when we go on tour we we try to contact some local people to have a like a local guide to take us out in the city you know it's so much better if you go and party with the Mexican family and you know with a mom has made some really hot chili and you know they like we have gone to these kind of crazy home parties you know all over the world and I'm I'm happy that we survived you know I've been locked in a car's trunk and like like all these crazy things have happened and that had nothing to do with alcohol maybe a little bit oh Larry you know you you guys have got so many songs you've got an expansive catalog and you know amongst those songs as well you've got some really big hits you know um no fear heartbreaker in the shack do, do you get a sense of when a song is really going to blow i mean like you know liquid in the shadows did, did you know these songs were going to be as big as they became i think in some way you get might get a little hint, but they've all all been different. Like, like in the shadows was like, I actually found it very annoying. It's like, you know, it's just like, it's like a something you can't get out of your head. But then the song around that hook is very emotional and very dark and so I think it was a cool combination and because it some people considered that like a, a party track but the message of the song is very like deep and like like very dark so I, I I think it's nice that you know people make up their minds and they hear things their own way but um it's it's really hard to protect predict what, what becomes a hit but i mean jezebel also has that quality as well though because jezebel you know you know when i listen to jezebel it puts me in a good mood but if i have to deconstruct the lyrics i mean a killer shark in heels a predator on wheels i mean these, these are not happy lyrics <laughs> yeah but maybe it's the thing like like the character Jezebel originally, she was a murderer and a traitor, you know, a bad woman, but she was also very attractive and beautiful. And like, you wanted to be with her, though she's gonna destroy you, you know, that nice contrast. I think that song has that. So you must be jet lagged now. UMK is on the 26th of February. Oh, some of us are just still praying to be in Helsinki somehow on that day, but certainly I'll be tuning in remotely. Um, and of course, more excitingly for me, the Rasmus is going on tour October and November all over Europe. You've even got a London day. Oh, MG, I think London is November 3rd. I'm just like, ah, ah. <laughs> We got to meet. We got to do something. We, You'll be the local yeah. guide. I, I, sign me up. I'm ready. I am ready. It has been so much fun. Please give my love to Aero, Aki, Amelia. You know, thank you so much for making the time. You've flown yeah, all was, was the fun. way back home. And yeah, I've, I've really enjoyed it. And I look forward to meeting you in person. Yeah. Do you have a message for your Eurovision fans? Well, I always say this. Keep it unreal. <laughs> That's my motto. And that is wonderful. Thank you so much. It has been a pleasure chatting with you. Thanks Thank you so much. Larry.